Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a review and overview of the Jibun Techo uh, Modified A Slim as well as the Mini which is a B6 Slim. So first I'd like to go over the Modified A5 Slim. So I believe it's called the Modified A5 Slim because it's not exactly an A5 Slim. Here is um, my Leuchtturm, which is your typical A5 size, and if you put this guy right over, if you put it right over, you'll see that it is actually just a smidgen taller than an A5. So you're going to have about, I would say, just over a quarter inch. Um, if we are ignoring the plastic cover. So it's not um, a conventional A5 slim or A5 narrow, but I am going to go ahead and take out... This is the only guy I have right now that is considered like an A5 slim, which is kind of... Um, this is a May Designs Traveler's Notebook cover, the one that's available at Target right now. And so this is a little bit... Actually, it's quite a bit taller than the May Design size. So I wonder if you were interested in putting this into a Foxy Fix number seven, whether or not it would be too tall or not. Um, I don't have a Foxy Fix number seven. This is the only A5 Slim that I currently have in my collection. Um, so I'm not sure if it would be uh, short enough to fit into that. So it is narrower then an A5, as you can see, um, probably by about a half inch. Let me go ahead and bring out my ruler. It's about a, qu a quarter inch narrower. So I got this guy off of an Etsy shop, Japanese Easy Shopper, and this one came in white blue or yellow. I do see that it's available on jet pens and it also, they also have a gray option and the gray one is the full kit. So this one is just the diary, which is one individual book. If you purchase the Jibun Techo kit, which I did last year, so this is the 2017 version that I bought, it comes with a life book and an idea book. And I reviewed both of these in my video last year. I'm going to do a quick overview of them here as well. Um, the life book is intended to go with you for the rest of your life. It has sections to cover from age zero to age 100, I believe. This guy is not in Tomoe River paper. It's in this paper called the Mio paper. So the Jibun Techo is uh, produced or manufactured by this company called the Kokiyu company. I believe I'm saying it properly. I will leave it down below, including a description from Jet Pens, which goes through all of the specifications of the paper and of the planner, and I found it really helpful. But the other two books have Tomoe River paper, which is the really thin, really smooth paper that you have in a Hobonichi. But this one is a little bit thicker because it's intended to last you for all of your life. So here it has a page for 100 wishes. Then it's followed by a page of personal mottos, which I really like. Then here's a life plan. It's all written in Japanese, so I'm not quite sure what it says for life plan. And across the top it says 20, 20, 20. Um, I wonder if that is for the year, because it's 20 and then it has a little gap after that. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up to the camera. So it's possible that the intention is to write your goals for, for a specific year. After that, you just have a plain... Uh, set up. It's the same as the previous page, but it just doesn't say life plan on top. Then there's the perpetual calendar, and these colors you'll find throughout the planner. So January is going to be this kind of dusty blue, and uh, February is going to be kind of this mustardish brown, I would describe it as. And then you have um, 1 through 31, and then 1 through 29, etc., as you go through 
the years and this is to document anniversaries, birthdays, things that recur every year on the same day. So that goes through December. Then you have a Japanese travel map or just a map of Japan. Then you have a world map. That's followed by My News, which gives you a line for every uh, month of the year. So it goes 1 through 12. And then your age is along this uh, darker edge. So we have a 1 through 4 on this page. My News, so you have two sections to write what happens to you at age 0. <laughs> Family News and World News. And then this goes on for the remainder of the book until you get to 99 then you have a family tree which is beautifully laid out i really um want to make an effort i think to go through this this year it has another family tree it has an emergency contact list password hint list financial management and it has several sections medical record, and favorite photos. So that's the life book. This comes with the kits. So whether you get the A5 or the B6, if you'd like to get the life book and the ideas book, that comes in a, in a kit. And the intention is to have this guy stationed up here in the front. The idea book is in the back, and then the diary, which you replace every year, you kind of swoop in behind these and have right in the middle. So the idea book is just a plain gridded paper. This one is the Tomoy River paper. The squares seem a little bit smaller to me than the Hobonichi, but I'm not quite sure. I'm going to go ahead and get that one out just to see how the squares compare. So the squares are actually about the same size. And you have, I believe it's about 40 pages for the idea book. So again, here the idea is that life is replaced never. Your monthly or your yearly planner is replaced every year. And then this idea book is just replaced when needed. And then you can carry your planner on um, for years to come. This blue section that I had last year that has 2017, it's just a piece of construction paper that is inserted into this um, cover so you can replace it very easily and that's what you can do year after year if you just buy the diary. For So for 2018, I just bought the diary in this size and I want to go ahead and flip you guys through that. So the diary also comes in this plastic cover. You have three compartments here for a credit card, which they also had last year. And this compartment here in the front, I really like these front compartments. I like to slide my phone into it if I'm carrying it around. So just to flip you guys through, that very first page is kind of this cream, it's a cream cardstock or paper with kind of a thicker weight. Then you have a page for 2018 and a slot for your name and perhaps some contact information. Then there is an overview of how to use the Jibun Techo, including the four-year calendar, yearly schedule, age chart. It kind of goes through all of the pages, but I'm going to go ahead and flip you through it so you'll be able to know everything that's on this page as well. This is a sample week, and I really like the way that it's laid out here. So I like to do an ideal week at the beginning of the year, kind of reset and think about if I had, in a perfect situation, how would I like to plan out my week? Um, how would my workouts go? What would I be focusing on at work and things like that? Then there's the four year overview. So you have 2017 through 2020 laid out in these squares. 
Then there's the year on two pages. So across the top, you have from January through December. And then across the left-hand column, you have 1 through 31 covering all of the months of, or all of the days in each month. You also have some highlighting. So all the Saturdays are highlighted in blue, and all the Sundays are highlighted in this kind of um, orange color. I do want to open up last year's because I think that... It was a little bit more pronounced last year. No, it's just about the same. So there is that denotation there that you can see. Saturdays in blue, Sundays in that kind of salmon-y color. Then there's an H chart on this side. So the way that you would use this is you would look up the uh, year that someone was born, so say 1963, and this year they would be 55 years old. On the right hand side of that page, there's a list for my dreams for 2018. So this is kind of like a place to put your goals for 2018. Then there's a money plan. It goes again from January through December, and actually it goes into January of the next year, or Maybe there's some sort of summary because there's two Japanese characters there that I don't know. So perhaps it's a summary or summation of what's going across each of those rows. But this is a money plan. Then there's a weekly plan. So this is an empty one, which allows you to plan out your ideal week. Then there's a map of Japan. Two pages for your favorite phrases two pages for a recommendation list, two pages for a book list, which I know I'll be using this year, two pages for a movie list, two pages for gifts received, two pages with two columns each of a promise list. I guess this is probably for commitments that you've made. Then there's a blank page, actually two blank pages, with a slight line going across six squares. Then it's the real fun part. So I really, really love this setup. It starts in November, and it is a habit tracker. So here you can write all the habits that you want to track. Across the top, you have um, 1 through 30 for all the days of November, and then you have the days of the week. The same denotation where Saturday is a little bit blue and Sunday is a little bit um, like salmon-y color. And then you have this for every single month. So you have November, December, then you're going into 2018 and it follows through. And this color strip that runs along the top of each of the months is consistent with the colors that you're going to find in the next few pages, the weekly overviews. It also goes a little bit into January and February. I know as a planner person, I tend to want to get started in December. Um, I rarely go into January and February of the previous or of the following year when I'm using a planner because I'm already excited for my next ones, but this does go into January. Oh look, it goes into April even. Then you start with your monthly overviews, which again starts early and I appreciate. It has a monthly overview for November, then December, so this is still 2017. Then it starts with the 2018 calendars. So this calendar, I go back and forth on whether or not I love it or it's too busy for me. I do like the Saturday and Sunday kind of different colors. Right next to the day of the month, you also have three little like emotion faces. You have a smiley face, a neutral face, and a sad face. And there's some Japanese characters, which I'm, I don't know what they mean, but there's also a little indication for the phase of the moon. So there's quite a bit going on 
inside the boxes, which could be a pro or a con. I really like that it has um, six weeks for every month, so there's never a day where there's a shared month. So here, for example, January starts on Monday, and then the 31st goes, let me see, one, two, three, four, five weeks in, but there's also a six week. So if there's ever a case, say, December of 2017, where you have to use one, two, three, four, five, oh, that one's still five. Um, it just has enough room, so there's never a situation where there's a shared day, which I really appreciate. And down here you have the previous month, this month and the following month in case you need a reference for that. So the months continue on. All of the months are together at the very beginning of this planner. So we get all the way to the end of 2018 and then you start 2019. So you do get January of 2019 and February of 2019. Oh, and even March. Do you get April? No, it just goes until March of 2019. Then directly following that, so there's no um, cut or intro page, you're going to start off um, from the end of 2017. So this actually goes from November of 2017 out until the end of 2018. So this page is going to start you off this week, which is Monday, October 30th, all the way through November 5th. So this is the first week of November you're gonna get the same color lines going across the top. So this indicates November, and then you have the blue for Saturday and that salmon, salmon-y color for Sunday. So if you go to the very front, when we reviewed the habit trackers, you'll see that November 2017 is that kind of minty green, and then across the top for November, you're gonna have that same kind of minty green. Now, one of the things that bothered me last year was that when there was a holiday, there was also that salmon -y color. And because this is manufactured in Japan for the Japanese market, that color is usually for Japanese holidays. So they don't always coincide with American holidays. And sometimes they have several holidays, so it can get very busy um, during the week. So let's see. I'm going to go to July. So July 4th is an American holiday. So as you can see, it's not indicated here. But then there are other holidays that they celebrate in Japan that we don't celebrate. And then the weeks can get a little bit, um, it's a little bit busy for my liking. For example, here they have a long holiday that goes from Thursday through, well, Thursday and Friday probably, but also Saturday. So the Saturday is not blue as I would expect it to be. It's kind of that more coppery color. And then we have that salmon-y color for Sunday. So it would be nice if there was some homogeny or some consistency in how the weeks were presented, but I understand that it's pretty useful to have the holidays in this kind of other color. So I'm torn and it's one of the things that kind of put me off about it last year is not having that consistency across the top. But the general setup of the week, um, now that I have it open, it's pretty nice. I do see that at the very top there might have been a modification. No, it's about the same. So across the very top, you have very, very small weather indicators. I'll go ahead and pick this up to show you guys. Here are the weather indicators, and then you have two squares at the very top. Um, I've reviewed some of the other reviews out on YouTube, and people have said that's for to-dos, that's for dreams that you had the night before. Um, there, it could be a variety of uses. Um, I kind of like having a little bit more room so that I can have a daily focus. Um, I'm not sure, like three, four, five might be ideal for me, but it just seems a little bit tight up there. Then there's a full moon indicator or just an indicator of the moon phase at the far left hand or the far right hand corner of the very top. Then you have um, the entire day going from midnight till midnight of the next day. So zero through 24. 
this is very interesting. I really like this difference, this difference in how they condense or expand hour slots. So from midnight till five, you only get one little slot there. But then starting at seven o'clock, you actually get half hour slots. So they extend the hours out. So here it's zero through seven, but then from here to here, it's seven to 1800, so about six o'clock and you actually get the half hour because it spreads between seven and eight, you have two rows. I'm gonna go ahead and pull you guys closer so that you can see that. So up here, the hours are condensed and over here, the hours are expanded. The other interesting thing about this layout that I just love, but it also could get a little busy, so it really just depends on your personal preference, it has the days or the hours where it's going to be dark. It has the hours that are going to be dark shaded in and then the numbers are in white. And then the days or the hours that are gonna be during daylight are clear or white. And then the numbers are written in the color of the day. And then over here, you'll see that, what is this, April 30th, it's supposed to get dark around 6.30 because by 1900 or seven o'clock, it's already shaded dark again. So on the one hand, I kind of like this, like theoretically, I like it because it lets me see if it's gonna be bright outside when I go to work and if I'm scheduling myself into like the dark hours of the day. So it is, it's helpful, but it could also get a little bit busy. So then we come down to the bottom. You have a nice space. So you have about six squares of open rows. Then you have these little mood indicators. So you have a smiley face, a neutral face, and a sad face. Here you have um, places to write what you've had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or you can use it for anything else as well. It just has kind of like a half sun a full sun and then a star at the very bottom and I think this is meant for breakfast lunch and dinner so I'm gonna go ahead and pull you guys up so you can see that a little bit closer as well on the left hand corner you have something that I again I really like and I also think it might be too much uh, this is something I struggle with with this planner so here you have not just the week or not just the current month, you have several weeks before and several weeks after the current month. The current month is highlighted and then you can see obviously several weeks before, which might be helpful because I'm like, okay, well, two weeks ago it was the 18th and two weeks from now it's going to be the 16th or something like that. But there's also a lot of numbers in that really small space. So on the one hand, I like it. On the other hand, I don't know if it's too much. Along the left-hand side under that is um, you have a denotation for a box, which could be for a to-do, and you have two rows, and it goes all the way across the bottom. Some minor aesthetic details. The design for this planner does go all the way up to the edge and at the bottom it also goes all the way up to the edge as well. So they really use up all of the space um, and you need to do that if you have so much of, the, of these details every day. Um, but again, it's just if you have a preference. I kind of prefer borders. I like a little bit of buffer, but I also appreciate that they've utilized all of their space. Something else is if you use the same color for all your months, it could be a nice little indicator of where you're at. And you can just uh, move your planner over to the side like this and pick out the month of January, the month of February, the month of March. But because some of these months overlap, you're gonna have some of these pages. Here you have uh, both April and May, they share the same page. So it might be a little bit difficult to see that if you're trying to get to the page very quickly using these side markers. Also, that goes into Sunday a little bit. So depending on how type awesome you are, that might bother you. It does take up one of the squares on the side of Sunday. 
So once you get through the weeks, let's see. Oh, as I'm moving through, I see that on the far right, it's not always um, it doesn't always have the preceding and following month. Sometimes it just has the current month. So I wonder if that's just in these pages where you have two months. It looks like when you have two months um, on the same week, they do have the preceding and the following month. But on weeks where you're just in one month, they just have the current month. Once you get to the end, this is uh, February, uh, sorry, it is December 31st. Then you see that you do have some pages that go into January 2019. So this is the first week of January and the second week. And let's see how far into January it goes. So it goes two weeks into January on the weekly overview. Then you have two blank grid pages. This is actually a good page to indicate how the use of the color, especially that blue and that salmon color, how it shadows over into the next page because these are just two blank pages but you can clearly see the outline of the preceding weekly spread and the following looking back on 2018 spread. So this is looking back on 2018. It gives you four lines for each month of the year. Here there is an empty space, so you can use it for um, an additional looking back on 2018 or something that maybe what you want to do different in 2019 or maybe for something that your kid did and this is something that you did or something else that you're tracking. Then it has the Tokyo route map. So I think this is for their metro or subway system. It's very colorful and very pretty. This year, um, I'd really like to go to Japan in 2018. Um, um, this is a map, I believe, of the other islands because it has route map, but it has another name that I'm not going to try to pronounce. There are several route maps. Then there's a world time difference being in the Hawaii time zone, which I believe we're just the only people that live in this time zone. It is helpful sometimes to when I call um, backwards in time to Asia or to the East Coast where um, my family is just seeing again where they're at. Then there's personal data at the end. And then just a final book written in complete Japanese, except for their Facebook page. And I'm not sure what this stands for, but I have plenty of information throughout the rest of the book. Um, so that is just four lines that I might want to look up. If you know what these four lines are, please leave them in the comments box down below. Um, at the very end, you have that cardstock again. You have three card holders here in the back and a large and a large slot here in the back as well. Looking at last year's, oh, I did have a large slot in the back as well. All right, so the final thing is how you get this guy in to here. So if I wanted to use the larger book, I could just pull these out, the idea and the life book, and you'll see that the life book it has life on the top left hand corner if you opened it this way from right to left, but it also has life on the back. Idea is the same. So I would open up this 2018 one and I would slide life here to the very front. And then go to the back. slide idea into the very back. And there you have it, a nice fat chunky little Jibun Techo in the modified A5 slim size. Now as a little bonus to myself and also on this video, I wanted to look at this uh, size, which is the Jibun Techo Mini, which is considered the B6 slim size. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pull out a B6 insert. So this is one of my B6 inserts. And I see that it is quite taller than this insert. And it is uh, narrower. So one would expect it to be narrower since it's a B6 slim. Um, I'm going to pull out another B6 just in case. So here's a B6 notebook that's really beat up because I use it quite frequently and I see that, yeah, it's still just a little bit taller than a B6. Um, I do have a B6 Foxy Fix, so I can see whether or not it would be able to fit in here. I mean, I think it would. And I mean, it'd be a little bit of a stretch, but potentially it could fit in there still. So I thought I would just flip through real quick and see if there were any differences. Clearly this is going to be smaller, but I wanted to just go through it quickly. If I find that there's too many differences, I'll go ahead and do a full video on the differences, but I don't think that there will be. But again, it starts off with, it looks like the same overview the same four years, the same year on two pages, H chart and my dreams, the money plan, the sample weekly plan, the Japanese map. I do see that the Japanese map is not in color. Let's see. It also isn't in color here. And I did notice that there is a, oh, the money plan is there as well. So there's that sample weekly plan, the map, favorite phrases, recommendation list, book list, movie list, gifts received and given, the promise list. This is so cute. <laughs> it is just a baby version of this. So if you're interested in the size comparison, there's a difference between the smaller one and the larger one, the B6 slim and the A5 slim, which as we already know is not an exact slim because it's a little bit taller. This goes out, let's see if it also goes out to, I think this one went out to April, right? So let's see. November, February, oh, yep, goes out to April. Then the monthly start. This is adorable. The monthlies go till February, just like the larger version. Oh, it's to March. It also starts at the end of October, so you get the first full week of November. It looks like you have all the same denotations. Of note, it's a little bit hard to see uh, the Thursday because it's so close to the center. And since it's a little bit smaller, um, it's just maybe a, a little bit more condensed. The rows or the columns are just about an inch wide. It has the same markings on the side, it looks like. It's open to the same page we were looking at before. It looks like when there is two months on one page, you also have that month that preceded it and follows it. You have the same indications for emotions, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You go all the way till January, the second week of January, your blank pages, your looking back, your route maps etc. So if you're interested in what the weeks look like next to each other for a size comparison, those are how the weeks look. And just because we've done everything else, let's go ahead and look at how the months look next to each other as well. So opening up to April, to April, And those are the comparisons for size. 
Alright, I have a feeling like this is a pretty lengthy video, but that is all for today. Until next time guys, I hope this video brought you some utility and joy.